we gather to sing all his praises we gather to worship the king we gather to hear of his precious love his grace into all lives he Well, good morning, everyone. We're joined here to worship today. Our text today is going to be Psalm 103. If you want to find that, it's a, it's a lengthy psalm, but we're going to read through it in its entirety and share that today. And that is our text to, to share for our message. We're in the month of February, and uh, we mentioned last week, and our messages were not necessarily for the month of February, uh, thinking of the word love as we've done, or aspects of love one to another, or God's love. But today we will center on that for just the one Sunday. And then we're going to move toward the end of the month as we've made the announcement. And I want to share it today. And if you are watching here, we'd like to have you uh, be here as a part of that. That's two weeks from today. Uh, as far as February, today is February 12th. And uh, two weeks from today on the 26th. If you'll put that on your calendar. Whenever you see this opportunity of worship, Make sure you note February 26th. First of all, pray for us. Pray for us as we in this area are just wanting to love people. And we just want to reach out to them. So you pray. And if you can be here, we'd love to have you here. Invite some people to come. Come down and see us at South Island Baptist Church. We're, we're, you kind of have to look for us, but we're here. And, uh, uh, but we want to be here, and we just want to be here for, folk, for, for people. And uh, so February 26th, we'll have our service at 11, and then we're going to be having soup, crackers, cornbread, home-style little soup dinner afterwards, so we'd appreciate you coming. You pray for us, but if you can't come, invite some people. I can't get there. I have my church, but here's some places. Here's some things down there, and tell them about South Island Baptist Church, and we'd love you to do that, and we appreciate you watching and worshiping with us, and we've worshiped together already. We've sang some songs today emphasizing God's love, and we want to take a few minutes today uh, with some thoughts about love. Uh, and, you know, some would hear that and go, Preacher, I think you said Psalm 103. When you think, what, was that your text? Now, did you make a mistake? Well, last week, uh, and uh, we preached out of the Old Testament, and uh, we preached on the, the, whole, the picture of the Holy Spirit and losing your influence, you remember, with the axe head. And we looked at that story. This week we're looking again from the Old Testament, uh, Psalm 103. In the next two weeks, we will also have Old Testament passages. So the month of February, we'll be speaking messages from the Old Testament. So, But if you would hear that and then hear, now you mentioned love and, and God's love and everything now, and, and nobody means anything by that, but w you might sit with me and say a couch conversation and go, my word, preacher, you could go to John 3.16. Or you could... Uh, or, you, or you could talk about Calvary. Or, or you could go to that passage where it said, uh, where, he, where he shed his blood for us. And all kinds of words there. Where Paul teaches his church in relationship to the sacrifice of Christ and how that God loved the world. And, and, and in uh, how he loves. And we already mentioned John 3.16. But think of that picture. Where it was the picture of a religious leader hearing Jesus shared the words to someone who had been around religion. And Jesus gave those simple but powerful words, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But today we want to look at an Old Testament passage. It's a Psalm of David, Psalm 103. And it's uh, shared, broken up in several ways. We're going to go over that in just a minute. But today I want to just share the thought, realizing God loves me. 
Now, that's a little bit more directional at me than I like, so I'm going to twist that title just a little bit. Realizing God loves me in a personal way, but I want to share to you, and for you that are worshiping with us, know this. Realize God loves you. Realize God loves you. Wherever you are, what you're walking in, what you're going through, know that God loves you. He loves us. He is a God of love. That is his very attribute. Now, will he be a judge? He will be. That's a part of his character. Is he righteous? It's a part of his character. But God is a God of love. And we're going to see this today. Let's look at this passage. You've had time to find it now. Psalm 103, if you'd like to read with me. And I hope you do. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly host, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. I hope at the completion of that text, I've answered the question. When you might ask in a good way, preacher, we're going to look at the Old Testament about love, it's all through that. Did you catch it? It's all through that song of God's love. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for the privilege to be here today. And Lord, I pray that you'll bless these moments as we share. These are important. I, ta I do not take this time lightly. And Lord, I pray that you'll use me vessel for these moments. And Lord, I pray that the words that you've given me will be a blessing as we look together into your word, I pray that we'll truly again be reminded of your love for the world, that you know us, you love us. It's who you are, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. When we look at this thought of realizing God loves me, realizing God loves you, this is one of the most stirring passages in all of the scriptures that deal with God's love. Nestled away in Psalm 103 gives you the stirring impact of his love. It made reference to how God had blessed the people. If you look back in the history as a psalmist, and this was a psalm of David, as we mentioned. When we look at this psalm, my Bible gives a word of commentary on Psalm 103. And I'll read it to you. From everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him. Isn't that a blessing? It's everlasting. 
It has no beginning. That's everlasting, simple. Has no beginning and no end. Isn't it wonderful that that characteristic goes with our God, who is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. But we're going to dwell a few minutes today on God's love. First of all, I'm not going to spend a lot of time today because we sh- we could look and share. Here is the definition. Here is the demonstration we know at Calvary. And we know that he, he is love. God is love. But I do want to dwell just a little bit from the breakdown of Psalm 103, and I want to give it to you. In Psalm 103, there's four sections of Psalm 103. In the first, it has an introduction that calls to praise and the Lord's benefits. In the second section, in verses 6 to 12, it deals with the forgiveness of the Lord. Verse 13 to 19, it deals with the Lord's compassion toward his people. And the conclusion, isn't it wonderful that you would see a psalm that in the conclusion, in the conclusion, having a call to praise? Because that's what psalms is. Psalms are psalms. But a song of praise in relationship to God's love. We could sing, sing that today, couldn't we? Because we're so thankful. I am that he loves me and that he loves you. He loved the world. And as we've said many times, that world in that passage, cosmos, is not the world as in the trees or the things around. It is are the inhabitants being the people. He loved the people of the world that he gave. He gave. Love is demonstrated by giving. But I want to take just a part of that section and deal with these thoughts. The benefits of God's love. The benefits of God's love. And we don't want to look at it from the aspect. We live it. We, we want to look at it from the point of we're so humbled by his love and his care for us. It does compare in a human way that when you might look to a position, as you have before, and many of you that are watching, you might have looked and said, I'm going to change jobs. I'm going to go over here to this occasion. I'm going to look for this thing now, and I'm going to pray about this job, as many of us have been in. And a person looking at something, and you're looking at the things about how that affects your lifestyle and things, someone might say to you, do you have insurance? Maybe. Or do they say something in relationship, being care, caring for you, and y'all, many of you that may watch might have been in that case, and someone says to you, when you change that job, has anybody ever asked, well, what are the benefits? You've been there before? Maybe. This doesn't even compare today. That by illustration is someone coming to go, am I going to look at this? What are the benefits? Do I have this? Do I have insurance? Do I have PTO days? Do I have personal days? Do I have sick days? Whatever may come to that particular occasion. That is only a small illustration to what we see today in this passage of the benefits of God's love. Because this is spiritual. For the Christian, the benefits of God's love are amazing. No way to put a number, and we don't want to. But let's look today in this passage, the benefits of God's love. God loves us. For the most part, you're going to agree with that title. God loves me. God loves you. But let's look today. The benefits of God's love. Verse number three. We're going to look at two verses here under that. Number one, the spiritual benefit. Man, could we not allow even my congregation to stand and share that in a testimony? God's been the spiritual benefits of God's love. A person could fill this pulpit instead of me today and say it. And many of you out there could do that same thing. But let's not take those for granted. And that's what our danger is sometimes. We take those for granted. We see God at work in our life. Well, that's kind of something, he, you know, well, I'm, I'm, I'm one of his children. He's supposed to preach her? Would they really do that? No, they probably wouldn't say it. But we might live that way. That's the danger. We're living it out. We might not say it, but we might live in that attitude. And that's dangerous. 
We must live in that spirit of spirituality in the way that he loves us and cares for us. Verse number three. And you might look at first and go, wait a minute, I don't see love in that passage. Watch. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. How more spiritual can that be? <laughs> the benefit that forgives your sins. There is no hope outside of God. God, there is forgiveness. Through Jesus, there is forgiveness. The scripture says, who forgives all your sin? Now right before that, it said, and forget not all his benefits. Isn't that interesting? Preacher, you read that before you put that in the sermon. I did. His benefits. His benefit. He said, don't forget the benefits. What are they? First of all, spiritual. Spiritual benefit. We have salvation. We can't go anywhere till we talk about that. Spiritually, we are in Christ. Now, don't, don't mess with those phrases there. I know that people say, well, that's a play on words, brother. In Christ, positionally, we are in him. Our salvation will be complete. Not that we add things to our salvation, but our salvation will be complete when we are in heaven. But when we trust in him, we are in him. Not to be taken out. That could be a point of discrepancy for some. Well, look, now, he's over here on the finger right here, and he did it, and went, boom, he's plucked out. The scripture says, no man can pluck thee out of my hand. That means we are eternal in him. He has forgiven us our sins. Watch this, and heals all your diseases. That in its primary is dealing with spiritual diseases. But yet that he will be heal he will be a healer. He is the healer. But he heals our sinfulness. Number two. No, not just spiritually, but emotionally, verse 3. Verse 3 again. He says, forgives all our sins and heals all your diseases. The diseases there can come from the lostness, but then we look at things that people go through. Emotional things that people go through. That people, for whatever reasons, hold on to things. People are walking through things that are legitimate, that are tough times. God loves you as you're watching. God loves you. God loves me. He will heal, he will heal us in our condition spiritually. But he will heal us emotionally. And please, please hear the preacher out this morning. There are things that people walk through because of their decision making. There are things they walk through because of sin that they choose to have. But there are situations that people face that are walking through and there are points of hurt that from a physical standpoint, from the emotions and the things that they're walking through, will bring them down and God will lift them up. Please, in our spirituality, don't become so haughty that we will come to the point to go, well, if they just didn't have this and that, don't, don't do that. I'm just giving you spiritual wisdom today, I hope. But God will heal. It says right here, heal all your diseases. The first in the context is the spiritual lostness. But yet the diseases that come, that come into your life, there's some. David, you remember David has some points of darkness now. You remember we studied David. Don't miss that. David has some points. And he was in a cave physically, and he was in a cave emotionally. And don't you miss that, that Jonathan, as good a brother as he was, came along beside him, probably prayed with him, and probably said, hey, my daddy's after you, whatever, I'm here for you, buddy. I'm right here. But don't you think that those words didn't measure up? Then he felt like the very one 
that he wanted to desire to know everything about his father, that his father didn't answer him in those dark times. He did. And if you've been in those dark times, don't look within yourself and look to be how weak you are. You just look to the one who's going to give you strength. And he will emotionally heal you. He will emotionally do that. Scripture says, number three, we've discussed it a little bit today, but I want you to see it in verse four. I want you to see it in verse four. He who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. The word pit here relates to a lot of things in the Old Testament context. But the pit here spiritually is relating to death. You're in the pit. You're dead. The spiritual application here is that you are dead eternally. Because of God's love, you have hope eternal. Do you see that there? He says, who redeems your life. This is David now, who says, who redeems your life. Not what we worked up to, but the Redeemer. Jesus is a redeemer. That's why we celebrate him as a redeemer. He redeems our life from the pit. Now watch. And lifts us up. We're not in the pit anymore. Our eternity is settled. We're in Jesus Christ. Pit here signifies death. Come out of the pit. You can't do it on your own. I'm making this message. If you're watching today, and God said, look, make that plea just now. If you're seeing that today and you're hearing that, you can't walk out of that pit on your own, but God can bring you out. God can bring you out. You're struggling, whatever it may be. I, I know Jesus, but I'm going through some tough times. God will bring you out of that. Settle that thing, salvation. In your salvation, trust in him. But most of all, you let him bring you up. Let him lift you up. We don't need to climb out in our own strength. We climb out in him. But the pit, of here, pit here mentions death. So eternally in his love, we have that salvation. Number four, authoritatively. There are benefits of his love authoritatively. Verse number four, you've already seen it. Who redeems your life from the pit. Now watch what happens. Authority, authoritatively, and crowns you with what? His love and compassion. A lot of people want to wear some crowns, don't they? A lot of people want to get this and have this and work for that and wear it. But man, that's encouraging to me. I'm saved from that pit of death, and he is raising me. He redeemed me, and he crowns me, you, with love and compassion. Is there a better crown we want to wear? Scripture teaches of crowns. Love and compassion. He crowns us with love and compassion. I mean, I, 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 want, I want God to bring people to me. And I know many of our churches here, and it's renewed that for us. Bring people in our past that we can show God's love. That we can reach out, that we can help. It's not us doing it, it's what God tells us to do. And we want to do that, but know this today. Be encouraged. He crowns you as a believer with love and compassion. And then number five, physically. Verse number five, physically, here's a benefit. You say, physically from his love? Let's look. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I think an Old Testament passage also says, you'll be having your strength renewed like wings as eagles. Great word there. Physically the benefits of his love. Sometimes you feel physically tired. Sometimes you feel tired in the ministry. But this says here, who satisfies your desires with good things. What is that? Godly things. If you'll study that passage, that good things is those things of righteousness, those things of God. Satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Be young again. Young in the spirit. Be renewed. 
Renewal is a great word. That's another sermon in itself. But know that physically there is that benefit of God's love, physically. And then judicially, judicially, verse number six. The Lord works righteous. Now watch the word here. You see it. My NIV, the NIV version, as I've shared today, has the word justice there. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Benefits of his love. Justice is a judicial word. Judicial word. Judicially, here is the benefit. He works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. If you're ever in the journey for the Lord, you look at those things and you see an evil is abounding, maybe. And you look and you put your eyes side to side. But remember, as we've said before, God is in control. The way of the wicked will be cut off. There'll be a day when full righteousness is restored. And he will reign. And he will reign as judge. And he is the authority now. He will be the ultimate authority. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. The benefit of this, judicially, judicially, he'll give righteousness and justice for the oppressed. Justice. In closing today, when we think of the thoughts realizing God's love for me, Realizing God's love for you. Know that God's love is this. It's consuming. God's love is personal. And I hope I've conveyed that in a, in a way today. And God's love is beyond comprehension. God's love is consuming. God's love is personal. And God's love is beyond comprehension. All through this psalm, You'll find, the day, you'll find David referring with pronouns like me and my. Because he saw his love personal. You today have seen his love personal. You've seen it. Experience his love. Know that he loves you. In closing, I'm reminded of a conflict in a community. And it was pretty heated. And they had looked to the church kind of as the authority in the setting, kind of the old-fashioned way. And we won't get into the ideas of what was going on, but they decided to have the meeting in the church, which was sometimes a community center in old towns and places. And this was pretty, and even some of the folks said, this thing's pretty heated, and, and, and we we're going to have that in the church. <laughs> and uh, they moved to have it in the church, and they had, different leaders around and different things. And kind of on a short notice, they decided to have one of the retired pastors be ready to start the service. And he ran late getting there so he didn't have a start. And they wanted to open it up with prayer and have the meeting settled and kind of open up in a good way, as bad as the situation was going on in the town. And the pastor, the retired pastor, was late getting there. And as everyone was sitting in a scuttlebutt, the arguments began to happen. And they were beginning to have some conflicts in the church. Now, not a church conflict, but community. And a little gentleman about halfway back stood up with a voice never had hardly spoken. And he said, That's enough. I know one thing. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And he sat down, and it changed the conflict. God's love does that. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the privilege, Lord, to share today. I pray that you'll bless those that have been here in our fellowship and those that are watching. Let us know in a time in a few days that love will be expressed. It's already being done in so many ways from what we see here. But Lord, let us not take your love for granted. We're so grateful for your love for us. 
Lord, bless now these words in Jesus' name. Amen.